here this, this evening on Wednesday night as uh, we are coming to you live from the Ministry Center of Sheridan Hills. And tonight, super glad to introduce to you uh, the folks that are with us on a little bit of a panel. We're going to discuss um, the events that are going on around the nation and around the world and um, what's happening with our church and what's happening with our own faith. Um, as, a, as a result of these things. And so the Loudons are with us. Uh, Bill and Kim, you guys have been at Sheridan Hills how many years? Have you been at Sheridan Hills? Well, I've been here about 30 years, Kim, really about 31, 32. 32 years. years. Yep. And you have five children. We have five children. Everybody's made it into their 20s? Everyone's in, well, Bryson's turning 20 this year. Yeah, Bryson turns May. 20. So Bri I yeah. forgot Bryson's the he's, baby. He's the That's youngest. Right. He's, he so. is the youngest. Yeah, oh, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. And Pastor Lucas, Pastor Lucas, right. how many years have you been on staff at Sheridan Hills now? Um, April first, it will be my third year here. Be the starting of the start of my fourth year, I will have completed three years here. Okay, so that is next month. That's he right. celebrates that anniversary. In fact, I remember you came to Sheridan Hills just in time for the Easter sunrise service. That's right. And you were running around trying to figure out what everybody was doing. That's right. Um, that's trial or that's introduction by fire. So, and then Chuck and Kathleen, um, Chuck and Kathleen, Chuck, how many years have you guys been here? 10% uh, of what the Loudons have been here. So we've been here for about three years now since about mid uh, 2017, I believe. Yep. Okay. I remember the first Sunday that Chuck and Kathleen came um, I remember just starting to talk to them, and immediately I could just tell that God was doing something in their lives, in their hearts. Um, they were about, Chuck was about to, uh, I was about to say to graduate, but you were about to retire from the military after how many years? You were in the 30. 30 years. 30 years. In the 30 United States Army. And Kathleen also um, had served in our, our military. Um, many of you. Uh, have gotten to know them a little bit. It's interesting, fun fact, um, one of them uh, flew Black Hawk helicopters for the United States Army, and uh, that was Kathleen. So uh, that's a nice uh, bit of trivia. She is the cool so one in the family. She's <laughs> the cool one, yeah. She's definitely the cool one in the family. So, Well, um, I'm going to just ask Pastor Lucas to just open our time in prayer. Um, tonight we want to talk about what's been going on in the life of the church and what has been going on around the nation and how we can be a church family together in faith. Um, we just want to encourage you tonight. We want to uh, rally around the gospel of Jesus Christ and allow the gospel to be really played out in our lives in the midst of these very, very difficult days, these interesting days that we've not seen before, so, or at least in recent memory. So, Pastor Lucas, open us in prayer if you would. And let's pray. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, who came, lived, died, and rose in our behalf. Lord, we're thankful for his life, which we count as ours, That's which right. you count as ours. We're thankful for his death, which paid for all our sins. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lord, we're thankful for his resurrection, which is the first fruits of the hope that we have that one day we too will rise again mm. and Lord, live with you for eternity. Lord, in, in times of uncertainty, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, right. today, and tomorrow. Amen. Lord, so we run to him, our steady anchor. We run to him our sure foundation and lord we are thankful we are thankful because we know that in him uh, we find assurance we find stability we find hope and not a hope that lasts 20 30 or 40 years but a hope that lasts an entire eternity so father today as we come together to discuss this past sunday the life of the church the current events around us help us do everything in light of what christ has done for us mm. and in light of who christ is lord he is the object of our worship so we gather ultimately lord to honor him and uh, so father though we're not all together in one physical place bind our spirits together 
right. with a deep desire to honor Christ mm -hmm. as we spend the next several minutes um, together in this live stream. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I just wonder how many of you may be even eating dinner right now as you're uh, in our midweek uh, time of worship and our midweek time together. We know that this is a new uncharted territory for all of us. As we said, um, we've never had an event um, where the body is not gathered um, here at Sheridan Hills, so this is the first time we've done this. Last Sunday, we met um, both in the Oak Grove, right over here to our right and to your left, um, uh, and it was a beautiful time, um, but there was, it was not without technical difficulties because we don't normally do this. So it's going to take us a little bit of time to get some kinks worked out. Even tonight, we'll probably have some hiccups, as Chuck said, we'll, we, we uh, may run across if the link drops or something like that. Just go back to the website and click on it again, and you can restart the video live on that yellow button. Um, but uh, these are... Uh, great days, even in the midst of difficulty, um, and I, we're, tonight we hope that that uh, comes on through and uh, that becomes real to you. Um, we, we did have a beautiful time of worship this last Sunday in our Oak Grove, a couple of pictures behind me, you may or may not be able to see them. We only have one video camera right now uh, that we're using, so we're going to zoom in and zoom out a little bit tonight, very informal, don't worry about that, um, but as part of our worship time together, uh, Wendy Artiago was, was baptized. It was a beautiful, rich way to, to end the worship service. But brothers and sisters just from um, all around South Florida that came together out in the open air, a um, little bit of safety there just because the, the virus really does not survive well in direct sunlight or even indirect sunlight. Ultraviolet light gets it pretty quickly, and so that, that's helped us a little bit. But um, I'm just interested to know, what were some of your impressions uh, about uh, last Sunday? I know many of you would love to share some of those, but we've been talking about different things. I will tell you that just as the service was about to start, my phone, uh, I received a message, and I looked down, and people were gathered all around out here in the courtyard, and I looked down, and Pam Peterson was asking, uh, excuse me, Pastor, where is the balcony? So <laughs> Pam was looking for the balcony. Uh, those balconites are diehards. In fact, I expected to look up and see her looking out the window of the third floor um, of the ministry center, but indeed she was not. So any impressions from, from um, uh, Sunday morning? What, what, well, for, what for, for me, it, it had the feel of the Easter sunrise service. Yeah. You know, I think worshiping God in his natural creation yeah. is one of the most wonderful things uh, you can do. So, and, and it also reminded me, uh, you know, in the field, when in, the, in the military, when you're out in the field or in combat, wherever you are, you just have a service. Sure. The chaplain shows up, you know, all right, you wow. guys come on together, and you get 10, 20 guys together, and you have a service, boom, right there. And those are always wonderful. So I think that we wow. did everything that we could to mitigate risk, adapt, overcome, and ensure that the body could come together. And I'm sure that that pleases God. So you've wor worshipped, you, you guys have worshipped outdoors several times. Routinely. Times. Oh, regularly. Routinely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you're, when you're out, yeah. Deployed. As also you slept outdoors, and yes. as also you bathed outdoors, and yes. you did a lot of We've things We've done a lot outdoors, of things, yeah. <laughs> <Everything> outdoors, <laughs> Bill and Kim, Kim, any impressions from Sunday? What was that like? Well, I think the weather was fantastic. If you were able to get a shady spot, it mm. was perfect. It, it, yeah. uh, you know, when the sun started moving and your your seat got a little uh, more sun on it, you know, it was a little, it got a little hot, and you you know shift over and get a nice shady sure. spot that was perfect. But yeah, uh, your forehead is like burnt yeah, from got church. A little bit. Is yeah, that what it yeah, is? Part of so it. Part go of to it. church for <laughs> the tan. Yeah, we like that. But it was really, I think it was a great time. I mean, a lot of people were saying, "Gosh, we should do something like this." more yeah. often not yeah. just you know for because we're trying to avoid uh, a coronavirus um but i heard nothing but positive feedback i think right. you, s you said the same thing right? yeah yeah nothing but great feedback and um i've been working the desk this week and many phone calls are we meeting sunday no it's going to be live stream oh it was so beautiful last right, week we're, right. we're looking forward to it and so but it was a beautiful day and the breeze and just worship and ending with the baptismal was just it was it was wonderful yeah, that was yeah. Cool. it was special wendy's waited a long time and it was just a special time mm. yeah so. yeah wendy's waited years to be baptized yeah. wanting to honor her mom and dad who said you know we want you to wait till you're 18 that was the rule in their home 
and um, and so she she wanted to honor her her mom and dad that go to a different church, and um, indeed she did that. In fact, she called me two months ago and said, "Hey, I'm about to turn eight, about to turn 18, and when that happens, I want to be baptized." So she was excited. You heard her testimony. If you missed that, um, I think we're going to post that online. Um, but it's a it's a rich thing. Kathleen, any impressions from Sunday? I I loved it. I had a shady spot, so <laughs> I, it was it was beautiful. I could hear everything, even though there were a couple of hiccups. But it was it was wonderful. And I even talked to some of the girls in the growth group, and they said it was great. I was like, "How did you like it?" And they're like, "Oh, it was so nice." So yeah. I know everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, everything except um, the moving sun. We do know, I meant to say at the beginning of the service, hey, this is a laid back service. If you need to get up and move around, do that. If the sun comes your way and you want to go around to the other side or something like that, this is, you know, so next time we do it, if we do that again, bring your chair, bring as many of you did, uh, blankets. The kids were able to, I think, really enjoy a, a worship time that was out of the normal. And, uh, you know, we're free to move around, free to make it comfortable, um, some things like that. So, and we'll look forward to it. Um, hopefully the squirrels won't be so upset. They were barking at us. And uh, <laughs> there was a bird right above the video camera where the camera was and the microphone was. So people said, Pastor, I couldn't hear you because of the bird. Um, but that's just part of the great outdoors. So, but a, a rich time. We looked at God's word. We looked at God's word and really um, spent a little bit of time in Psalm 56. We ran through Psalm 56. Maybe you have your notes from Sunday. We, you know, in the life of our church, we really believe that um, that when we come together, we need to we need to seek to know God's word more, which is why we provide notes. It's why we look um, very carefully at the scripture. Um, and so Sunday was both a preaching and a teaching time. Um, we're going to always try to do that as best we can. So the, the program had the scripture to, uh, printed for you. And, and many of you took notes. I, I think one of the big things for me in that whole passage, I, I'm just blown away by how real Psalm 56 is, like all of the scripture, but how real it is about the, the reality of our fears, the reality of troubles in this life, the reality of difficulties that come. And, uh, you know, David was just a real guy. Um, in this case, was running for his life. And so he knew what fear was. And God has preserved and given us his word, given his word and preserved his word so that we too can gain from his truth and how to have faith in him, even when we are afraid, even when we're tempted to really be, be fearful. But um, in, in verse 1, it says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. Remember, David was being chased. All day long, an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample me all day long, and many attack me proudly. And then that third verse was what we really keyed on. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Um, so we talked about several things out of the, the morning, and I just... Uh, I, I hope and pray that God was bringing peace and uh, uh, really comfort to your heart as we considered that. Any key things that anybody um, wants to mention on that? Well, I think, Pastor, for me, uh, like we spoke a little bit earlier, you know, verses 4 and, and verse 11 are the ones that resonate with me. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? And then, of course, the last line in verse 11 what can man do to me as long as i trust in god and for me that kind of harkens back to the standard you know the warrior's prayer you know psalm 23 verse 4 right uh, though even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i'll fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff comfort me i mean those two psalms just for me just tie together yeah 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 anyone else well, I do remember, uh, you probably don't remember this, but years, many years ago, you had shared with me um, about fear, and, and you said, fear is not from God. Yeah. You, and then you, you quoted Second Timothy, the first uh, verse there, uh, where God has not given us a spirit of fear, he's given us uh, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so if it's not from God, where is it coming from? Yeah. The rhetorical question you said, you said to me was, uh, so it's coming from satan all right so or it's your flesh right um but it's not from god right mm. and that was that i mean 
that was very comforting to me. Uh, and, and, you know, God's still working on me, but um, it's just, I, I really can, I can really put my trust in his word. And he's never let me down. I mean, he, he's a God who can be trusted. Uh, he knows nothing, you know, this, this, you know, I'm sure we've all heard this virus is not taking God by surprise. Uh, he, he knows what's going on. He knows, mm. he knows uh, the, the, the end of all this and, and we can trust him. He's a God. He's trustworthy. He is Amen. trustworthy. That's right. I well, I, as you mentioned, sorry, Kathleen. Okay. No, I, I just enjoyed how you told the story about uh, Andrea and Cheryl Ann and when they were yeah. growing up and they were afraid to school. French you public school. We put Cheryl Ann and Andrea <laughs> at five and six years old, or six and seven years old, into French public school, and they had been homeschooled before that. And, and so you taught your own children to memorize the verse to help yeah. them, and I thought that was great. Yeah. That's and that's something. If you don't have that one memorized now, yeah, there's a good time to work on it. Yeah. So. For and that's Second Timothy one seven. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and a sound mind, and um, that will bring peace to really um, any circumstance um, as we look to the Lord. Pastor Lucas, you were going to say something. Yeah, so as you were sharing on Sunday, and you got to that third verse, um, when I'm afraid I put my trust in you, um, I just, I thought, how good, how awesome that the Bible gives us the answer to fear you know it recognizes that we that a f a fear is part of the human experience uh, but tells us what to do with it um, so you know right now in, in a sense we're facing an enemy that's invisible yeah. uh, it, that is threatening that is uh, I understand fear coming from that uh, we are also facing uh, markets that are in uncharted territory right um, okay, th it's understandable. So what do you do? Well, if you don't trust the Lord, you have to look within. But what a silly place to look because you are afraid. So you're looking for the answer where fear is. Mm. But the Bible tells us that when we are afraid, we are to look for our comfort, not in our own strength, right? But in Him who is strong Absolutely. at all times in God mm. so I was just uh, I was reminded of that as you shared that verse which is a verse that I've been sharing with my family yeah. a lot lately and I mean fear is an issue right now I mean I, I know that there's a few different emotions and maybe we can talk about that a little bit um, when we when we talk to people on the street when we talk to family members that live here in South Florida or even around the world um, when we watch uh, newscasts or we watch television or whatever in this you know what are some of the emotions that are here I, obviously fear is one of them are there some other emotions that people have concerning what's going on right now anxiety I mean okay. just am I gonna have enough food or paper products or any of that kind of stuff how long is it gonna mm -hmm. last am I gonna be able to hold out will I be stir crazy in two days after spinning it at home right. all, those, all those things so anxiety and stress not necessarily that heart you know, yeah. uh, hitting fear. Any other ones? I, I think about one. Annoyance. I mean, I'm a, this is interrupting my plans. I'm annoyed by this. I, you know, you look at everything from, you know, your calendar that you were, you know, we were planning, I know several people that were planning to go outside the state on vacation during spring break and day of travel. Uh, Victor calls us and says, what do you guys think we ought to do? Um, you know, and and he just said, I, I don't think we're going. We're, we're not going to go. So their family was all excited about it. The Hills were all excited about it. You know, their family, grandparents were going to take some of the kids on a cruise. Um, all these things that just got stopped. A, a whole group from our school going to Europe um, that just, just a few days before that, um, Mr. Spee had to say no um, to that. So, you know, all of the, maybe a fair amount that's annoying. So. I think probably tying in with your annoyance is frustration. So you go to the grocery store for apples, right? And there's no apples. You know how do you know who cleans out the produce aisle, right? Right. So there's that frustration, but you, you know you just obviously have to trust that it needs to be taken care of, and you know, God's the only one that's going to do it. Right. And 
me, especially, hopefully, he kno he's making some toilet paper somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We'll be able to get our hands on it. Any other, any other emotions or effects that this is having that come to y'all's mind? I, I'm just thinking about our church. I'm thinking mm. about our people. I'm, uh, I think fear is one of the big ones. I mean, I, I'll just be honest with you. You know, I have two parents that are in their 80s, and Marcy's mom and dad are, um, are further back from that, not, not quite there. But, um, you know, dad called, or I called dad to check on him yesterday. They lived down in the Keys, and I said, Dad, how are you doing? And he said, well, um, I've, I think I've started a cold. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all, all, I said, okay, tell me exactly what's going on. And as we were talking to mom and dad, we were, we were concerned. So really Mark and Kelly and I all get on a conference call. Kelly's in Shreveport, Louisiana. Mark is here in South Florida and we get on with, with dad and, you know, yeah, why would we do that? Well, there's a, there's a tendency to be concerned and, you know, Christians sometimes concern is okay. Fear is, you know, a little bit more. We need to be careful about falling over into fear, and that's part of what the Lord would have us to trust him um, rather than to run in fear. But nevertheless, that's a, that's a real thing that all of yeah. us are dealing with. Um, I think one that may not be uh, on the surface at first, but I think if you think carefully about it, it's there, is uh, some people may be tempted to feel proud during the season. Uh, they may look at those that are fearing and say, you fear this? Yeah. I have no fear. You should be like me, yeah. right? And that is a very dangerous attitude because the strong ought to point the weak to Christ, mm -hmm. right? The strong ought to point the weak to, to faith and hope in the sure foundation of Christ. So I think on the other side of fear, there's, right there's the danger of being proud because I don't fear. I'm not afraid. Uh, so, so you should be like me while we should say, Oh brother, uh, sometimes I fear too. Sometimes, uh, there are things that concern me as well, but here's how I respond to that. I respond to those things by placing my hope in Christ hmm. who always is for me and never against me. You know, Pastor Lucas, as you say that right now, I think I'm if I could hear prayers being offered to the Lord in the midst of this discussion, I think I'm hearing probably some people saying, Lord, forgive me of that. Lord, I've had that attitude. I've been prideful. You know, we need to say, Lord, forgive me for being afraid in this thing of, of not trusting in you when, when I've allowed my heart to truly fear. Um, but for others, some are probably saying, Lord, I, I'm what Pastor Lucas just said. I'm, I've been proud about this. Um, um, I, I've had to confess being annoyed uh, as well. So I have to probably confess all of them, but um, at one point or the other. But um, yeah, I, when I, I, I know that many of you may not have your notes in front of you, some of you might, but at the end of Psalm 56, if you have your Bible open, at the end of Psalm 56, in verse 12, um, there were two things that are really three that I, I pointed out. One of them was the right action, the right attitude, and the last one was the ultimate deliverance. But in verse 12 it says, I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render, what? Thank offerings to you. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have, and here it is in verse 13, for you have delivered my soul from death. Yes, my feet from falling that I may walk before God in the light of life. And uh, that's where it ends. It ends in the ultimate salvation of God, the ultimate deliverance. And um, I, I think for Christians in this day and time, we really need to recognize that this life is here today and gone tomorrow. If this is your best life now, I really feel sorry for you because it's even in its in things that are going well, it's nowhere near where it's going to be when we get to heaven, when we get to a glory. Mm -hmm. And so, and then when we see things not going well, um, we need to we need to be reminded that the Lord has has said that there's going to be trouble as a result of us living in a fallen world. And so, the ultimate deliverance has meant a lot to me. Um, this all pointing really as a psalm of Christ um, coming, his suffering for our life, 
um, his going unto death to be resurrected and to deliver us. And uh, that is the ultimate picture. So mm. I, I hope and pray that um, if, uh, if God is just dealing with you in this area of fear, that maybe this whole coronavirus, one of the great, beautiful benefits that we get out of this is that we learn to not be afraid. Um, right. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. Um, what a what a key thought for us. Any other word on that? I don't want to miss anything. Um, as we've been kind of thinking about um, issues in the life of the church and if you, issues of, uh, of around the culture around us, I, I have this, this thought for us. Um, when a crisis hits, um, there is the common response, when you really think about a crisis, for many, it is a time to fear. Suddenly, a big crisis comes. Yeah, we may be annoyed. Yeah, we may be um, stressed. We may be some other things. But, but when we really start to think about what, what if this really does get worse? What if maybe some in the life of our church? Wait a minute, Pastor. I'm in the high-risk category. I'm part of the, the older part of the, the, gener- the uh, population. And if I get this, um, this could be a real problem for me. Um, we know out of Belgium, um, some evidence is showing that even people that are younger that get it with no um, pre-existing conditions, young people that are healthy wind up having permanently damaged lungs sometimes. We, we know that there's some people, they won't even know that they've had a virus. They won't even know that they were sick. And then there's others, even young people, that sometimes will have a much more serious thing. Um, as we just kind of think about those things, indeed, it can be a time for fear. But kind of where all this is going to is, for Christians, it doesn't need to be a time for fear. It needs to be also a time for care. Um, yes, a time for faith, trust in the Lord. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. But also, um, that as Christians, that we would begin really caring for people because this is our time to shine. Um, this is our time to shine the light of Christ, I believe. Um, notice this. Um, back in 1963, when this church was established, there were three things established as our main objectives. And pe- some people are in their house right now are going to repeat this with me. But the first one was, Pastor Billingsley said, we need to win the lost. The second one was, we need to disciple those who are one, disciple the one. But that third one, is also a key component that is here, and we see it even in this care for the fellowship. Um, you know, when we are talking about what good can come out of coronavirus and how can Christians um, shine the light of Christ, it's for caring for others, um, caring for our own church family, as well as caring for people um, that are all around us. Um, that's really when when the world looks at Christians, that's what they ought to see us doing right now. Not running around hysterical afraid, not running around seeking to hoard everything we can get, but seeking to love one another and to love the world around us. We've also said in the life of our church, truth, worship, community, mission, and I have a question here for us as a church, uh, excuse me, as a panel, um, How can we do truth, worship, community, and mission as a result of this? Um, Any thoughts on that? How can we live out truth? How can we live out worship? How can we live out community? How can we live out mission? If we say these things are what Sheridan Hills is all about, um, how can we do that? Any thoughts? Well, I was just saying this is this is really an open door in some cases. Um, maybe a, a standing back a little bit away from the door, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, just to, to be able to reach out to your neighbors that are lost. Um, um, this is this is the perfect opportunity to 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 bless your neighbor and uh, yeah. maybe start up that conversation on um, sharing the gospel with them. Yeah. Other oh, thoughts? Joe, I just this morning <coughs> I was going through messages and I realized to myself you know what I haven't checked on our community group and I haven't checked on the missions team that we've got uh, put together so uh, I don't know, sometime this morning I sent out messages but obviously 
requires more. It requires, you know, I should be calling somebody and making sure that they're they're doing okay. So I, you know, putting that back on myself to to make sure that folks that are within our circle uh, right. are taken care of. Right. So Bill mentioned outreach to neighbors. You mentioned in reach to church members in your community group. Uh, other things. I mean, doesn't the world need truth right now? I mean, there, there's a lot of falsehood around. Um, well, now's well, the time. When I just had a thought when Lucas mentioned the pride thing. So, so there's different reasons that someone would have pride, right? And mm -hmm. and if someone did, I don't know, say something like that to me or to anybody around him, I'd ask him, well, where do you get that from? And then, of course, you can dive into That's the right. truth with that person potentially. I think. Yeah. That's yeah. right. One thing about worship is just uh, uh, worship is all of life, right? So there are certain verses in the Bible that really help us think of worship, not in the way that modern um, Christian culture thinks of worship as simply music, but uh, worship being all of life. Um, so, for example, whether we eat or we drink, we do it all for the glory of God and that we should uh, glor give glory to God in word and in deed in all that we do. Um, yet it is very special. It is a very special component of worship to be gathered together. Yeah. Uh, yet we don't have that. I mean, to think that today is Wednesday and we're looking at a we're virtually at empty seats, yeah. empty auditorium. Mm. Uh, in many ways, to me, that's disheartening mm. um, because that is one of the great expressions of worship for me and for this entire church during our week. Uh, so I would say, how do we live out corporate worship? Well, praise the Lord for technology. You're yeah. right now being encouraged with the word, through the word, um, uh, because of the technology that the Lord has provided for us. Uh, friends, let's make a commitment that Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 1045, we're going to click that link and we're going to participate in That's that good. service. That's right. Let's worship together. We're figuring this out. We spent a lot of time today even talking about how this would take place. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how Sunday will take place. Uh, and um, so we're, we are still figuring out a lot of things. But would you commit hmm. to being gathered, virtually gathered with us every Wednesday and every Sunday morning, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and Sunday mornings, at 10:45, by simply going to SheridanHills.org and clicking the live, uh, the, the the service live link, I think that you would uh, fulfill this call to live a life of worship in a great way if you did that. Amen. And you know, it, it, it's funny. You know, we use the term when something's bittersweet. Um, this has been bitter in that, oh wow, we can't come together. But even Sunday morning, even before we've missed a Sunday and we're just meeting outside, I just remember standing up there on the hill and as I saw people coming up out of the minister's center having come in the door and they were coming up and they're coming up and they're looking and I, I just saw the, the joyful expectation on their face of, man, this is my church. Now I know we were doing something new when we were doing it outside. But I saw the, it was as if people were coming out of the stress of the world into the body of Christ and being with friends and finding a real solace in that. And um, the thought of us not meeting is sad, and I think that's good. I think it's good that it bothers us mm -hmm. that we're not going to be together. Um, and quite honestly, this, this causes my heart to be more sensitive to many people in our church family that can't meet with us mm -hmm. on a regular basis. I mean, people that have great illnesses, um, people that um, maybe their circumstances in their life have just come to where they can't, they can't come and gather, but they long to. And I, right. I remember so many passages where David longed to be in the house of the Lord. Mm. He longed to be in the presence of the Lord. Um, and I, I think that that's a, a great thing, that's a right. beautiful thing. And this just reminds us how important it is, um, even when we're, we're not here and we look forward to it. Right. Any other things on community, uh, truth, worship, community, mission? Yeah. The, well, maybe an upside to having to stay at home and watch it live on the computer is 
if you're somebody who comes to church or you're the only one in your household who's saved or somebody else is saved but they don't really attend regularly, well, you're at home with them watching them on the computer. Hey, come watch this with me. Have your coffee with me. And yeah. it might be an opportunity to just That's right. kind of right. introduce them into the word a little bit That's yeah. right. at home. Just through an invitation or yeah. even sending a link to them saying, yeah. hey, our family is about to sit down. You know, it's a, it's 1030 and here we're getting our family kind of getting them all up. You know, we're not doing much else. We're not supposed to be out running around, um, uh, you know, on vacation right now. We're supposed to be hunkered down and kind of having some social distance, um, certainly not being in big crowds. And we, we see the, the wisdom in that um, in, in light of where we see Italy right now and others that they've swamped the, uh, the medical establishment just simply cannot keep up with all of that. So if we can slow it down, you know, this is a good thing. But as we're kind of all doing that, it would be great to send a link or to send a text to a friend saying, hey, here's the link to my church's website and we're gonna about to sit down and have worship and there's gonna be a message um, I just want you to see who we are. I want you to see mm. what we're about. Uh, right. That might be a great open door for the gospel. Right. So, yeah. Chuck? Well, I, I mean, I just, it shows such a significant level of commitment, right? That this church uh, mm. is going to deliver the truth in some form of corporate worship to their community, regardless of what the situation is. And I think that that's a great example of. You, you know the willingness to adapt, overcome, to execute the mission that uh, we've all been given. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a great example. Yeah, and you know, what is it? Uh, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes great things come out of trials. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, things that we would have never thought of before, things that we would have never done before. I mean, we were just talking about how Robin is sitting here in one of the seats. Robin's our media. Uh, specialist for the church and we're like okay so Robin we're not printing as much stuff right now and so we're talking about the fact that we need to focus more on social media the fact that we need to focus more on uh, electronic things well a church that really is gung-ho about being here and being in the body of Christ which we should be which we should emphasize that well maybe we can grow a little in the electronic area too without compromising that um, you know, I, but, I, but I do hope that all the electronic communication and even these times of us not being together will make us long to be together That's right. uh, when this is all said and That's done. That's right. And we will appreci appreciate it that much more. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, any other words? Kim, did you want to say anything? I wasn't sure. Well, um, Pastor Lucas already mentioned worship, and, but it's our everyday life, what we do. Like when the McElroy family calls the office, oh, who can God. I serve? Who can I shop for? Bring it to their doorstep. No contact. Um, prayers. How's Billy? He had surgery. We haven't heard anything. Uh, several phone calls. Check in on Vivian. You know, and it, it's just encouraging to hear those things because that shows the lies of our church and their heart, and that that's worshiping the Lord when they're asking those things and doing those things in their everyday Amen. life Amen. and it's really encouraging and like we had students alex had students here making phone calls to <laughs> our seniors today yeah. and they were calling back and one was dr didhart oh great. and it was just really a sweet time for me to be able to talk to him and he goes you know i really miss meeting with everybody but i watch the monday message every monday when the sermons come out yeah. and it's like i'm there and yeah. it was just really encouraging for all these years to know him and not see him because of his, you know, his health now, pushing yeah. 90, he said, when I talked yeah. to him. Yeah. And um, just he was so encouraged by the phone calls that they were making today, checking on them and the needs. Yeah, so Alex, how old were the guys that were calling today? What, what? 16, okay, so there was 16, 17, and 18 year olds. If you got a call from one of our young men today, uh, that was by a 16 year old, 17 year old, and one 18 year old. So. I think it's so cool that we have youth that want to come spend their afternoon reaching out to and checking on people, doing what, I mean, the pastors, we, we were sitting here saying, man, we need to check on, we need to hear 
but especially if there's needs, we want to know what those mm -hmm. needs are so we can be praying or so that we can meet those needs. Mm -hmm. And here these young men um, did that and were willing to come out. And uh, there's a lot more calls to be made. There's a lot more folks to be checked on just in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I, I'll just mention these things right here. We've already mentioned a couple of these, and these are just off the top of our heads real quick. Ways that you can care or serve the life of the church. And just think about this. We've already mentioned one. The McElroy said, hey, if anybody needs grocery shopping, I know that there's, there's um, older folks in the life of our church that should not be out being exposed to the virus right now. Um, I am willing to go find what they need and bring it to them. Um, that is the third person that I have heard say that. Mm -hmm. So other people were saying, I am willing to go shop for somebody else. I've even noticed on social media, there'll be someone in church saying, I need toilet paper because I'm up early in the morning. I'm I, a nurse. And then by the time I get home, it's all gone. And then uh, one of our members, you know, say, I have an extra pack. You know, let's talk. Let's hook up so I can get it to you. I that's, mean, that's, right. just that's true love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> true love is giving away toilet paper. <laughs> Amen. But I mean, yeah, going and shopping and uh, going and, and just doing other things that are going to need to be to be done. Uh, we have one family um, that, you know, we think is probably dealing with um, a cold um, and some of those things, but nevertheless, mom and dad are, you know, they need help with the kids. And so we've, we've kind of met some of those needs. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that we can do that, but you see here on the screen, what do you mean by computer setup? Um, there's a fair amount of us that have never tried to do much live streaming. Um, and when we do try to do it, you know, our computer messes up or it's not really hooked up and it's not fast enough or something like that. Maybe the computer's gotten bogged down. And, you know, the older you that you are, it's more likely that you're one of the ones that struggle with that. We have some real computer whizzes in their 90s in our church. But to be honest with you, um, there's a lot of folks that struggle with that. Well, we have, I know that Marcy has gone and spent time with various seniors in our church getting them online, and I, I hope that even some of them are on tonight. Um, but I just want to encourage you, if you're in a community group, um, you ought to just see if everybody can get online. And if somebody is saying, hey, I, I didn't get to see it, or it kept stopping, or, or something else, you know, maybe we can solve that. Maybe we can even loan a laptop or loan an iPad to mm -hmm. a church member so that they can participate. Um, that's what I mean by number two that's there. Number three, um, child care. I'm not, that, number four is not pool supplies. It's pooling supplies. So I don't know about, maybe you need pool supplies for your pool. But uh, what I'm talking about is bringing together supplies. Um, uh, as time goes on, we don't know where this is going to go. We don't know how tight it might get. This may kind of blow over in the next three or four weeks. Um, or if, if uh, things really heat up medically, um, it could be elongated a little bit, and supply chains could be affected. Uh, well, as Christians, we ought to be thinking about how can we make sure that everybody has enough. If you look in the book of Acts, the church in Jerusalem, um, in the early days of the church, they were dealing with great economic and, and uh, even famine um, that they went through at different points. But the church was coming together under persecution. Church was coming together, and they were sharing with each other whatever had need. Lucas, I heard about Indy going to your neighbors and saying, hey, what do you need? We got a lot of food, and we have hand sanitizer. We'll, we'll give you some. Um, there's been several people that were asking about hand sanitizer here at the church, and we were like, well, we'd love to give away all of it here, but we can't do that. Otherwise, we can't meet once the door's do open again. We're going to have to be careful about that. But we were trying to make some of that available to a few folks that said, I, I really have nowhere to wash my hands at work. I need to be able to do that. So we've tried to do that. Um, but there's a lot of things that we can do. Meals for the sick, um, not just coronavirus people, but other folks. Mm -hmm. um, either way, there's ways to safely do that. We, right. we, we, we want to say, if you're fixing a meal, make sure you're not sick. If you're sick, don't be cooking for somebody right. else. If you're sick, don't be cooking for somebody else. That's a, that's a bad thing to do. And even while you're doing it, you want to use extra hygiene, extra hand washing, extra okay. utensil washing, extra sensitivity to that, if you're, especially if you're cooking for somebody else. 
but um, there's going to be some folks that are really sick and need that, um, need some help with that. So, mm -hmm. um, but we can do that uh, without it being a great risk. Um, I don't know if there's any other real thoughts on that. Our, our time is kind of drawn to a close here a little bit, but um, I just, I want to give you guys an opportunity. If there's any other passages or thoughts or events in your life where you um, uh, came to that you had to deal with, and while you guys kind of think about that a little bit, I want to share one passage that has meant a lot to me, um, dealing with trials and dealing with difficulties. James chapter 1, when I was in college, um, I memorized a lot of the book of James um, because it was just such important wisdom for um, me. I felt like I needed so much of God's word in my heart, especially from James. And James 1 says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, whenever you encounter, look what it says, whenever you encounter various trials. That means all kinds of trials, not just trials of persecution, not just trials of um, threat to your life of some way, but all kinds of trials, maybe even coronavirus trials, or maybe even interruption of life um, trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So God is using these trials, even in a fallen world. He's taking what Satan has meant for evil, and he is using it for good. Um, we see this overall principle over and over and over again that God takes the curse of sin and turns it for his glory. Um, and I believe that he's going to do that with this. And I believe that for all who have ears and who are going to hear the gospel and respond and live the gospel, that the trials that we go through can produce good things, can produce real fruit. It says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect, or the word there is mature, the idea that you may be fully developed, that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. And that's what faith does. Faith causes us to lack in nothing because we have Christ, um, and we grow in Christ. So... Um, that's just one passage that's meant a lot to me, and I, I pray that as we move forward in all this, um, that we'll be seeing the trials as producing something that's good. Um, any other thoughts from you guys? I want to make sure you have that. Well, I've, I've thought a lot about just Israel's experience in Egypt during these days because we're thinking of uh, uh, disease and pestilence, and that was such a such an, a strong experience of Israel in Egypt, uh, especially when the Lord— Of the Old Testament. Right. Not right. Of modern days. Of, of that's, the right. Old that's right. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, and I've just I, I've, I just remember just how so often the plagues, well, every time the plagues would affect the Egyptians, but would not affect the people of Israel. Mm. And, uh, you know, today, the young men that made phone calls, uh, I asked them, anyone showing any symptom of the disease? And the answer was no. Um, I am not saying with this that Christians are immune to this disease. And I'm not drawing a parallel to say none of us are going to get touched by this disease. What I'm saying is the Lord is in control of everything. Hmm. He was in control of every plague that came in Egypt, and he was able to spare his people. So even as I think about this, I have been praying very boldly. Hmm. I have been praying very boldly because the Lord is able to, uh, that the Lord would spare, uh, I pray that he would spare my family. I pray that he would spare my church, my loved ones. I pray hmm. that he would spare all those who are trusting in him. And I pray that he would spare the world, that the world would turn to him and know that God is the Lord mm. and he is in control of all things. Again, I am not making a health mm. and prosperity gospel statement. I know that many will suffer. I know that many have suffered Christian and non-Christian alike. And it's likely going to continue being that way. I'm making a statement of the power of our lord hmm. and when we pray we should not pray to a god who is weak and powerless but we should pray to a god who is powerful hmm. who is 
able to do something. So may our prayers be filled with faith because the object of our faith, our Lord, is powerful mm. and is able to do something. Amen. Yeah. Any other words? Well, and the, you know, the, off of what j Lucas just said, it, the power and the control that our God has and everything. We were just talking earlier that uh, you know, during my first deployment, you know, I was raised Catholic, so I wasn't technically saved but uh, the fact of the matter was I understood the gospel and I knew that God was in control mm -hmm. so regardless I thought that I thought that I was saved at the time uh, but the bottom line was the fear is not as present and you don't worry as much when you understand that you can't control the situation and that was during desert storm and what's interesting is that people can see that in you even if it's you know, I guess technically not there, yeah. But but understanding that 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 the Lord is totally in control and this Jesus died for our sins makes everything much, you know, easier to to endure to bear. Yeah, yeah. totally. Amen. Amen. Well, indeed, He has a glorious plan through all of this. Um, we are going to trust Him and see what it is. We are going to trust Him when. Uh, the the times are going well and when we are experiencing his protection and his power in our life and we're going to trust him when um, things seem to be uh, filled with pressure and pain um, we sing that very often in many of the hymns we sing and many of the songs we sing um, you know are, are we going to trust him just when times are good um, no we're going to trust him when times are bad too Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a that's a key issue for us, I believe. Um, we'd like to take just a few minutes and, and pray together. I think that it's very important that we end this time in prayer. And for you, um, in your living room right now, I really want to encourage you to join with us in prayer. Um, very often on Sundays, our whole church family prays together, and one person will voice the prayer, and our church family is praying for the individuals that are there when we are together or praying for the government or praying for our community or praying for the needs that are around us. I think that God is glorified even when we are linked together um, electronically, that we can pray together. This is a great way for us to do this. And so I'd like for us to do that, take a few minutes and pray. Um, I'd like for one of us to pray um, indeed for our church, um, that our church would approach these things in faith. Um, and that we would be filled with faith on that. Chuck, maybe if you would pray for us on that. Um, I'd like for somebody to pray for, especially the most vulnerable in our church, um, physically, um, and, and uh, that we would pray um, that God would spare um, them, give them the strength and the, the protection that they need. Um, and uh, maybe even as some of us do get sick, that we would suffer well, mm. that we would suffer in faith um, and trust the Lord in this. Um, I'd like to pray for um, our government leaders, so I'll pray for that. So, um, Chuck, you'll pray for the church. Maybe, Kim, would you pray for the most vulnerable among us, the, the ones that maybe will really struggle with some of those things? And... Um, Pastor Lucas, um, perhaps you would you would pray for um, our witness to the world um, during this time as well. So, Chuck, why don't you start us, and then Kim, Pastor Lucas, and I'll close it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us your Son, That's right. who suffered, died, and rose again and saved us we thank you for your saving grace we come before you humbly and we love you mm. and we know that you love us mm. right. we want to experience your grace in everything that we do and especially in this time of really the unknown this virus the responses that our government is going to take towards it, 
and the outcome. We don't know, but we know that you do. That's right. We know that if we are concerned or afraid or anxious, frustrated maybe, we just need to put our trust in you. That's right. Praise your word and really remember Psalm 56. Mm. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? What can a virus do to me? Mm. Mm. So we just ask mm. for your blessings mm -hmm. to give us the faith to not fear mm. and That's understand right. that you are in total control. You are all powerful. You already know what's going to happen and we just don't need to worry about it. Mm. Mm. We just need yeah. to trust you. Just need to trust you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Dear Holy Father, we just um, we thank you for today, Lord. And um, we just lift up our brothers and sisters, Lord, um, um, that have um, weak immune systems now, Lord, um, mm -hmm. that you would just protect their bodies, Lord, from getting this virus, Father. That's right. That you would sustain their health, Lord. Um, we lift up Billy and Miss mm -hmm. Vivian mm -hmm. and Michaela mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and others, Lord, who have been going through so much these past months, Lord. And we just ask that you would just sustain their health through mm -hmm. this time yes. and that you would protect mm -hmm. their bodies. Yes. We ask that you would just um, continue to make their bodies strong, Father, right. yes. in Jesus' name, Lord. Yes. We lift up our senior adults, Father, that yes. are mm -hmm. able to be out, Lord. We ask that you would protect them. We um, just ask that um, many others in the church would um, help serve. That's right. Um, serve them in their homes, serve them with their groceries, things that, that may need to get done so they wouldn't have to go out, Father, mm. and maybe compromise their health, Father. Mm -hmm. um, I just ask that you would just protect them, Father. Protect mm. all of us, Lord, as new reports are coming out that um, this virus is affecting all ages, Lord, mm. and um, some don't even know that they've had it, Father. Yeah. We just ask mm. that you would just be with us, be with our families, Lord, um, and if we're to get that, Lord, or anyone in our family, Lord, we ask that we would um, honor you in that, Father, and that you would be glorified, that we would suffer well, Lord, yeah. that we would um, be a light to you, Father, Lord. Yes. And that we just um, ask that you just be with all of us, Lord, during this time um, as we go forward. In mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we have a world watching us. Um, and, uh, Father, they, uh, they wonder if our faith is true. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, we desire to honor you with the way we walk when our faith is really tried. Mm -hmm. uh, Lord, we pray that we would experience the peace that surpasses understanding mm -hmm. and that we would live in light of that. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that as fear escalates around us, that our trust in you would be uh, a, a reason for our neighbors and for those around us to ask about the hope that is within us and that we would be ready to give an answer to that. Lord, that we would be ready to say that for us to live is Christ That's right. and to die is gain because it's far better to be with Christ. Lord, uh, I pray that uh, I pray that we would treasure Christ. Mm -hmm treasure him more than our lives more than our comforts and lord that we would also just be able to explain this to our neighbors that when we have christ we have all things and we lack nothing and lord may we not point to our own strength as the source of our hope but may we point to christ who is our steady anchor mm. Lord, I pray that in the midst of this um, dark situation, the light of the gospel would shine and many would come to know you That's right. That's because right. of these circumstances. Many of our, our neighbors would come to know you through our witnessing. Mm. 
through uh, the life that we live and the message that we preach. Mm -hmm. Holy Father, we do um, thank you that we can run to you in prayer in times like these. Lord, I thank you that when Hebrews says that we may come boldly before the throne of grace, that we would do that as, as individuals, as families, Lord, as a church family. I pray that Christians around the nation would come boldly before the throne of grace seeking help in time of need. Lord, I, I thank you this, more, uh, this evening that we can do that on behalf of our leaders, that we can come and beseech you, Lord, that we can beg of you, God, to work through our leaders. Lord, we pray that you would work in the minds and in the hearts of those who are in the White House. Lord, it's not merely Donald Trump and Mike Pence, but Lord, all the advisors that are around them in the cabinet room, and Lord, all of them that are over in the executive building. Father, we pray that you would be working in their minds and their hearts. We pray that you would be moving them to make the right decisions that would bring about justice and that would bring about righteousness and that would bring about good things for the people and for the nation. Lord, we pray that you would work in the heart of Donald Trump and cause him, Lord, to look to you and ask, Lord, for your wisdom because you have, you have said that you will give wisdom to all who will ask in faith. And so, Lord, I pray that he would do that. And I pray that Mike Prince, Pence, who seems to be a Christian, Lord, I, I pray that he would be speaking truth um, to Donald Trump. And I pray that you would cause their executive decisions to bring good things in this nation. Lord, um, it would be just like you to send a great trial to bring people together. And um, Lord, you can confound one of the most politically divisive times in our nation's history and you could bring about great things through this mm -hmm. and lord i pray that you would do that i pray that you would bring a spirit of charity um, through this i pray that we would be rightly humbled through this it seemed like 9 11 did so much to humble the city of new york new york city mm -hmm. and even washington dc and other places and there was a there was a, a genuine openness to you that existed after that. And I know that there were many people, there's people even in our church who would say that they came to faith in Jesus um, in part because of 9-11. And just as Pastor Lucas has just prayed, I pray that that would happen again here. And I pray that it would even happen through the leaders um, that are among us. Lord, we live in Broward County and in Dade County. And, and Father, we pray for the... Uh, county commissioners we pray for the city commissioners we pray father that you would give them great wisdom i pray lord that they would look to you i pray that even when they don't that you would still work and move in them for the benefit lord of our of our counties for the benefit of our cities and so lord help us to be good citizens who love the community well um, even in our not meeting and even in our seeking to do things in a way that is part of the group effort of the society. Lord, I pray that we as Christians would do that, that we would not be obtuse, um, that we would not be obnoxious, but Lord, that we would be loving and wise and participatory um, in the society around us. And Lord, that we would be salt and light in a time when there's really a great need for preservation. And there's a great need for light. So, Lord, I pray that you would do that. Lord, be honored in our meeting today, um, tonight, in this time. I pray that we would be ready for Sunday as we worship together. Uh, show us how to solve the technical problems that we have. Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to find the right video switcher so that we can do that. I pray that our Internet links would be good and that we would all learn how to do this well. But, Lord, most of all, we just pray that you would be glorified as we look to you as individuals and as a church family. In the glorious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope and pray that somehow you've been blessed tonight. We uh, look forward to seeing you on an individual basis where we can. 
Uh, if you have a need, you can send uh, an email to info at SheridanHills.org, um, and we will seek to meet that need as best we can. Maybe you don't have a need, but you have an availability. Now would be a great time to send a message um, and uh, just send a message saying, hey, I'm able to do this or, hey, I'm able to do that. Um, we would love to know that. Um, I would encourage you, as Chuck has said, to reach out to your community group. Uh, I've seen a l several chats um, for our What's Up chat group for our community group, um, just of people encouraging one another and checking on one another. In fact, somebody in our community group sent dinner last night. Um, to us, and that was a, a just a, a, a real help to Marcy and I amidst some busy days. So I want to encourage you to be doing that to one another and for one another, um, caring for one another. Uh, we will not be meeting on Sunday um, here on the property, but we will be meeting um, online. And so uh, look forward to that. I want to encourage you to make that a good time. Get your Bibles out. We may be sending you some emails with even some notes that if, you're, if you can, print out the outline, print the scripture. You can do that and have your Bible ready. And um, we'll, we'll sing some and we'll pray some and we will uh, study the word together. Um, often like we do. I know some that are really healthy, you're, you're wanting to maybe get together and watch the service together. Be careful about that, just because the whole goal is for us to be isolated, not um, spending uh, a lot of time and exposing one another, especially if there's um, uh, vulnerable people um, that are in your house. Uh, but I do want to encourage you to do that. So we, uh, we're glad that we could be together tonight. God bless you tonight. Hope that you um, sleep well. In Jesus' name, we do all of this for his glory.